Hello guys, welcome back to Photographics Academy. In this one, we are going to be playing around with lightning and snoots. Trust me, it's going to be an amazing, amazing, amazing video. All right, I'm already excited about what we're going to be learning. So I'm going to be trying to play around with perspective, lightning and snoots. On this one, let's see what it's going to come out like. And these are the snoots effects we are going to be using so i've already taken our time to separate them you know separately so we don't have to be putting it out separately or in the video the first thing we need to do of course is to crop this image i need to give it space right so those crop out give it some headroom make sure that your content are where is done on them press enter all right so once turn on we are going to make a selection of our object because we need to separate her from the background. I click code to select inverse. So now our selection is acting. The next thing we need to do is to make a duplicate and right click go to layer via cut. So now we'll have our object standing alone and our background standing alone. Now let's get to work. So I'll move straight to this place where our snoot is and I'll pick up my move tool. I'll drag the first one, no, this one over here, yeah. Place it over our image. Of course, I'm going to scale it in. So normally I would have just written it the way it is, but it's not going to give me the effect that I want. So I want it looking like it's, you know, more like a window kind of effect or something. So what do we do? Simple. You change the perspective. So hold your control and drag in from the edges to change the perspective like this. We'll push it this way, right? So I want it looking like it's a lightning effect that came from the side. No, well, something like that. Okay, so we'll place it somewhere around here. If you feel it's not big enough, of course, you can even make it bigger. Place it somewhere around here, depending on what you want to do. I think this is too much. Press OK to enter and change the blend mode. So we'll just change it to a blend mode that allows us to get just the lightning without the blacks. Yeah, so anything around here should give us that effect. I think I'm going to stick with linear dodge. So once we have this here, I need it to be two. So instead of creating a new one, I'm going to press Ctrl J, right click and uh, Ctrl J, Ctrl T, right click and flip horizontally. So we'll just drag it over and place it right here. So we'll have the lightning effect coming in from two different sides of course we need to put the two of them together match them as a group match them as a layer rather change the blend mode back to linear dodge now we can create a mask for the two and remove the white edge all right so once that is done go to your filter go to blur go to Gaussian blur because we need to blow it out a bit and this is perfect right okay so we've got the first effect we wanted the second one we need to create for the floor and that is what we are going to be using this one over here to create so pick up your move to drag it over place it on the floor make it be right then make it lie down on the floor by still using your perspective by holding your control to change the perspective of the object so i'm just holding my control to change the perspective i want it looking like it's on the floor then once we get it make it bigger because you can even draw it very well so that get that this is more like a floor so let me push this one up up rock bring here down a little then scale it up it so you can decide to make it smaller make it bigger yeah press ok so now it's time to blend it first our linear 
our linear dot rather. So this is the result. The before, the after. But of course, it's too sharp, so I'm going to need to blow it out again. Wash and blow. You to put. I think that's just too much. We can just drop down if you tip it. Very good. So you can even decide to add the third one, but I feel it's going to be really, 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 really busy. That wouldn't be necessary at all. All right, so once that is done, I'm noticing that the edge over here is not blended properly. So I'll use my masking tool and use my brush to just mask in that edge. You can even decide to change the color of your background now. And it's going to really, really still look beautiful. So let's see what we'll have. Change it to maybe like a uh, color. Or even multiply. Uh, that looks too bad. Let's take the color and let's change the hues and see other color options we have. So I think I'm going to still stick with my cyan at the end of the day. I'm going to stick with this at the end of the day. So the next thing I want to do is just to create a global color grade using my color lookups. Find the perfect color for it. This is beautiful. Oh, nice. Very high key. Let's see how that works. Ah, uh, looks quite distracting and bleached out. This is good. Then I'll go to my curves and try my auto. Let's see if it's going to give us that kick imminent. So we we'll just go into our auto options and find the best one that gives us the click we need on the image. So I think enhanced monochromatic contrast did a good job. Brighten it up a little bit. And we are good to go. So this is the overall result. This is the before. This is the after. This is the before. This is the after. If you feel you still want your colors to pop, you can create a stamp visible layer, go to your filter, go to camera roll. Back. Then just go down to your vibrance. Lift your shadows a little bit. And you are good to go. So let me show you again the overall before the after, the before the after, the before the after thank you so much for watching this amazing video do make sure to subscribe to our youtube channel and if you subscribe turn on your notification bell to get notified every single time we we'll drop a new video until then see you on the next one